UK Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis – How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com. Wait, let me add a row for Meghnath and let me add a row for Ravi. We can even execute all the three at the same time. Okay, so now let's try to execute Bharat, Bharat with employee 1. So let me execute this. So I have selected this and I am executing this. So it is showing me an error saying like a uh, violation of primary key constraint cannot insert duplicate key into the object employee ID. Duplicate key value is 1. So that is the use of primary key. So primary key will ensure you that it will not allow duplicate values for you. Okay. Even if I try to insert null here, for example, if I try to insert null here, null is something like a blank value or a void value. So if I try to execute this, even I'll get an error saying like cannot insert value null into employee ID table. Column does not allow null values. So so the four points which um, the four points which we uh, got explained from Kavita, I repeat again. A primary key is used to differentiate the records from the table, and a primary key cannot have null values. A primary key cannot even have duplicate values. And what is the last one? A table can have only one primary key. Okay. So now, um, now this is the use of. So now, if a new employee joins, okay. So I have a question to all of you. So if a new employee joins, what is the employee ID I need to give for employee for the new employee? What is the ID of the new employee? I repeat the question I saw only two responses if a new employee joins what should be the employee ID of that employee yeah so so the answer is three now every time a new employee joins so so you imagine if I don't have these three things so every time a new employee joins what you should do so so every time when a new employee joins I have to go to the table I have to do a select star from the table so what I need to do I have to do I have to do a select sorry again power went off here so today it's a bit fluctuating for me so I'm not able to see the keyboard now okay so now select select star from employee okay so I'm executing select star from employee I mean, I'll execute this so now I have two records I have two records select star from employee I have two records so every time when I want to add a new employee I need to check what is the empl current employee ID maximum employee ID so I need to check that okay currently it is two now let me insert three so that is what I need to do why should I worry up worry for this so now if I want to add a new employee for example say Bharat I need to do a select star from employee and I need to check what is the maximum employee ID employee is 2 so let me make it make this as 3 now let me execute this so now imagine if next employee joins uh, again I need to verify what is the biggest employee ID here and then I need to okay why this is not inserted okay I think I have not executed it so let me execute this now let's see select star from employee so I have three employees now next time when another employee joins I need to again do a select start from employee I need to see that okay three is ID now I need to give four here okay so I need to give four here and then I need to give name here uh, Rajesh or whatever so now I need to execute this so I don't want to do this uh, because I'm doing double work I'm executing two commands for that reason what you can do is you can make this employee ID as an identity column when we make that I as identity column identity column will have two things so if you go here identity column will have two things the first one is called seed or initial value and the second one is called increment incremental value 
this is called initial value and this is called incremental value so now let me go back here and let me drop this table again so this is a so I'm going to drop this table I'm not able to see the keyboard okay so now let me drop the table drop table employee execute this now I'm going to add employee ID as identity column I D E N T I T Y identity one comma one now so okay I need to put this after integer okay so right click on this cut and then here paste it give a space okay so employee ID is an integer which is an identity column which starts with one and which will be incremented every time by one and it's a primary key now now while inserting records into employee I don't need to give this employee ID because it itself identity column will take care so I need to remove this um, just a second I am not able to see okay so what I need to do is I need to I need to remove this uh, employee ID because your identity column will take care of that so now I'm removing this so so when your table is having an identity column when your table is having an identity column you need not put that column here your identity column will itself take care of adding that uh, initial value one and incrementing it by one so now insert into employee employee name is the column I'm not giving employee ID here and values let me give Meghna again so let me execute this so okay I dropped the table so let me create the table now I create the table now okay I'll explain the identity column again okay so and if you make any column I got a question saying to explain the identity column again okay so previously when you saw when you saw the table without identity column whenever I'm adding a new record whenever I'm adding a new employee details I have to check the maximum value which is already there and then and then I was adding the new column and then I was adding the new record with with one plus of that but when you make that column as identity column so whenever you insert record into that the column will itself take care so now let's try to understand better now so I have made this column as identity now I'm inserting employee record employee with employee name as Meghnad so if I execute this one row has affected so now if I see select staff from employee the value is one Meghnad because you have given made this as identity column for the first insert which you do that will initialize that will make uh, this initial value here so whatever you are seeing here with this this is an initial value so this is an initial value and this is incremental value so for the first record which you insert it will add this one as here so employee ID one next time when you insert any record for example next time I want to insert Ravi here second record Ravi as employee so when I execute this when I execute this one record has been affected and now when I click on select star from employee I can see that which is incremented by one so Ravi is having employee ID 2 so now I don't I don't need to care about how many what is the maximum ID which is already there I, I don't need to add plus one I need to insert the record okay so now when another employee joins Bharat I don't even need to give the column here employee ID column while inserting the records so I can simply give it here like this now when I do a select star from employee your identity column would have added one more record for that see now three Bharat okay so that is the use of identity column okay so now let me ask a question to all of you so let me copy this so how many of you are clear with identity column okay so now then if you are clear you need to answer this question so I'm dropping this table I'm dropping this table employee now I am going to have this Meghna and I'm going to have a Ravi and I have Bharat three employees now I'm making this as a thousand here 
I'm making this as thousand here and I'm making this here as five okay so now questions to all of you I'm going to create a table again I'm creating this table again now questions to all of you so when I insert this record Meghnad so what will be the ID for that what will be the employee ID for Meghnad I'm saying mixed responses uh, some are saying thousand some are saying some other values so now let me execute this so this is the initial value this is the initial value for the first record for the first record when I insert employee ID will be five will be will be will be thousand for the first record so when you see two values here so the first value indicates that the initial value that is the initial value and and the second value indicates the the next next value incremental value so now let's try to insert value here let's try to insert magnet now if I try to do a select star from employee I will see thousand here see now I'm seeing thousand here okay so now when I try to add Ravi here when I try to execute Ravi here and when I do a select star from employee I will see thousand five here okay so when I when I try to execute Bharat here so I will see here thousand ten so when I execute this I'll see thousand ten so so if you have an identity column for the first record this will be the value from next record onwards it will add this value whatever you are mentioning here okay so now so do you think uh, do you think uh, there is use of identity column do you think identity column saves your time yeah identity column plays an important role especially when you want to increment the value by some fixed value okay so now now uh, and one more thing you should keep it in mind when you have identity column you should not mention here e employee id like you should not mention here five or something so so when you have an identity column you sh while inserting records you should not put that column here why you should not put here because your identity column will take care of this column you should not worry about this so you should not put this here okay so so that is about identity column now so identity column will have two things one is one this is called initial value so we call this initial value as we call the initial value as seed so the initial value which is thousand here we call that that value as seed so a seed is a uh, seed in general term is uh, uh, general term a seed is called where where uh, the plant will be born right so the initial value so that's why they call as seed seed column seed so this value is seed and this is incremental value okay so normally uh, normally we uh, we make identity column for those columns which are incremented by fixed value and which are different for all the all the employees so those types of columns we make it as identity column okay so I'm seeing a question we use identity command only in primary column not necessarily not necessary that we need to uh, we need to use identity column on a primary key wherever you want you can do that you can use that identity column okay okay so now I, I give uh, I'll explain identity column so using an identity column you can ensure that a particular column will have some initial value and will be incremented by some fixed value now identity while declaring an identity column you have to specify two parameters one is a seed value and the other, other one is incremental value and the third point when you are inserting a record for the table you should not mention the identity column name while inserting the records because your identity will itself take care of that column okay now who wants to explain this identity column other than Kapita who wants to explain this identity column anyone wants to try just the two points or three points whatever you understood you can just tell that to all of us anyone wants to try um, okay so Shweta wants to try okay I'll unmute you yeah Shweta you can go ahead yeah you can you can unmute Shweta uh, you're on yeah okay uh, so uh, identity column has uh, 
two things in it. Uh, one is called uh, seed, okay. and the other one is uh, incremental value. Okay. Uh, so the first thing is uh, like once we declare our identity column, uh, it will give uh, the values automatically to the column, and uh, the seed will be the initial value, and the uh, it will be uh, added uh, automatically whatever uh, the data we define for the incremental value to be added to it. Per and uh, yeah, perfect. And uh, yeah, any other things you want to add? There was one more thing I forgot. Sorry. Yeah, even I forgot. So, what is the other point we discussed? Yeah, okay. Kavita wants to try again. Yeah, Kavita, go ahead. Yeah, what we missed actually. Okay, while well inserting, right? Okay. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, thanks Kavita. I have again muted you, put you on mute. So, your voice was a bit low. I'll tell what uh, Kavita has told. While inserting a record, we should not put the column employee ID here. We should not put that column, but we should put, we can put the other columns. Okay. So, that is about identity column. So, let's go back uh, to the table and we'll try to understand the other things which are there. Okay. So now this column I made as identity because I want this to be started with one and to be incremented with one again. So and and anyway um, a primary key itself will not allow null values. So this is of no point putting here. So primary key will not allow null values. So we I have added not null and again primary key. Okay. So it's like uh, two times I'm telling the same thing. Okay. So this is clear. And last name I have made it as varchar twenty. So and not null so i don't want a uh, first name to be null so so that is the use of so now let's go back here so so now uh, let's try to drop the table again and let's try to create the table again so when okay sorry let's try to drop the table again so when i make this employee name as not null okay so i just made this employee name as not null and created the table now when i try to insert a uh, null value for magnat so when I try to insert null value for for employee name, it will throw an error because I have added a constraint saying it's a not null constraint. Okay. So so now so we saw till now two constraints. One is a primary key constraint, and uh, constraint is since uh, data will have some restriction. So primary key. Yeah yeah. I'll I'll come back to this. I'll come back to this. So primary key employee ID identity identity column we saw we are clear with identity column we are clear with primary key we are also clear with not null so first name will not allow not null in this case last name can allow null values and uh, and one more point which you are taking so okay so i got a question saying like every time we make changes in the table we have to drop the table not necessarily so we we can use alter table concept uh, which we'll be discussing in the next class for today, uh, I'm not telling alter table, but we have using alter. You can actually you can actually change the you can actually make changes to the table. Okay, so we don't need to drop table every time if you make some changes. Okay, now department uh, can allow null values. Okay, now let's try to understand a check constraint. So a check constraint is something like uh, if you want to ensure that, for example, for example, I am applying for a job okay so now I have a table called sorry by mistake I executed all of this so now I I want to create a table for job applications so I'm creating a table job applications job applicants so which will store the details of job applicants so so I'm going to give I'm going to give um, um, name applicant name where care 30 and I'm going to give age integer so now for this job for this job I have a restriction saying like the age should be less than 35 so those who try to enter age value who is who is uh, greater than 35 I should not allow to insert into this table so so now if I execute this if I execute this table um, create okay create spelling is wrong okay 
so now if I execute this I have created the table now if I do select insert into insert into job applicants and I'm writing here applicant name comma age values if I try to give here Meghna and if I try to put here 50 so if I try to put a value of 50 here and if I execute this this will allow me okay so now I don't have any restriction for this column now but I want I want this column I want this column not to allow the values which are less than 30 which are which are more than 35 so in that case what I can do is I can add a check constraint check constraint saying age should be age should be less than 35 so let me drop the table now let's try to create this table with the check constraint I have a check constraint saying age should be less than 35 so let me execute this and now try to insert the value here with Meghna age 50 so I'm getting an error saying like uh, the insert statement conflicted with the check constraint so so I cannot add value anything that is greater than 35 okay so now what I'll do I'll put the age my age so now if I try to execute this I'm eligible for applying for the job okay so that is the use of check constraint a check constraint will restrict you bits with the data so for for this table uh, um, salary I have made the check constraint should be greater than zero obviously salary should be greater than zero so okay so now is it clear about the check constraint I don't see a single response yeah okay so now so I discussed about the constraint which I discussed or I discussed about primary key constraint and I discussed about not null constraint I discussed about check constraint so I'm getting a question saying like please explain again okay so okay so the check constraint I will so check constraint is used to restrict the data so for example uh, for example so I want this age column not to allow the values which are okay let's take another example okay um, okay any other example uh, which you want to share others uh, so that I can explain check constraint other than age and salary Who wants to explain uh, check constraint? Not with this example. Uh, the example of your choice, you should explain the ch this check constraint. All of you? You are able to hear me? Okay, so who wants to explain this check constraint other than the example which I gave? Um, other than salary and age, any other um how how a credit card information okay sharon wants to try so i'll make okay sharon you can try yeah you can unmute yourself and you can give it a try you add when you're inserting data into a column yeah uh, and uh, i would do an example like employee id has to be more than 1001 okay yeah that's a perf yeah. perfect example so when you try and uh, enter a uh, wrong employee ID like 902 it will not insert okay okay uh, okay I'll explain uh, I'll, I'll explain on that to all the audience okay yeah thank you Sharon uh, I think this uh, is a good example yeah okay yeah so I, I'll explain the uh, idea which has uh, which Sharon has given so so let me create a table create table for example say sports so this is uh, this is the table uh, which will show the employees uh, who are interested in sports so so this will have employee ID and so table employee so we already saw employee table employee table which is uh, which is already there with the employee ID which is which is thousand from thousand one 
thousand onwards. So obviously, if if your employee table is having uh, having employee IDs from thousand onwards, your sports also should have employee IDs which is greater than thousand because you are going to store those employees who are interested in sports. So what you can do here, integer, and you can put here check constraints saying like saying like employee ID greater than thousand. Now you can put here sport name 100 where care 50 now now when I create this table sports so now when I try to add uh, add some employee ID which is less than 1000 for example insert into sports where uh, and here employee ID comma sport name values if I put here 1001 comma if I put here uh, if I put here I'm interested in cricket okay so now now when I when I execute this it will allow me because my constraint says it should be greater than 1000 but now when I put here for example 900 995 when I put here uh, when I put here volleyball now when I execute this the check constraint will not allow me because the check constraint here says that the employee should be greater than 1000 so I cannot insert a record of 995 okay that is the use of check constraint okay so the three constraints which we discussed so far are primary key constraint not null constraint and the check constraint okay and uh, okay so now is it clear for all of you what is the use of check constraint? It will just restrict you. Uh, it will just restrict you from entering uh, with some data. Okay. Now let's go back to this PDF. Okay. Now we have something called small date time. Small date time data type. So, okay. Not null is very straightforward. When you make this column as not null, you cannot insert null values for this table. For example, I made this first name as not null. So when I try to insert null value for first name, it will throw me error. It will throw me error for that reason. For example, uh, an employee, all the employees should have first name. Some employees might not have last name. Uh, there are chances like uh, employees might not have last name. Do you agree with me? How many of you agree that there might be employees who don't have last name? Yeah, there, there might be some Chinese or, or Japanese like they will only have first names they might not have last names they might have only first names so in that case that is the reason why I made this first name as not null but last name can be null okay that is what not null constraint so when you just make it as not null it will not allow you uh, null values okay now okay so we have something called small date time so so I have written an article long back when I was working in Infosys so I'll show that to you once okay so now this article is written by me in 2009 22nd February so in SQL server if you want to see the date if in SQL server if you want to see the date uh, current date what you can do is uh, you can write select star select get date so when you execute this it will show you the current date and time so I just executed this you can see that you can see that the current date is 25th May and the time is 6:49 a.m. so which is my time because I'm not in US so my current time is 25th May 6:49 a.m. Sunday for you it will be 24th May and I think it's it will be nine something, nine twenty. Okay, okay. So this is about select get date. Okay, select a get date will currently will give you the current date and time, current date along with that time. So so when I when I wrote this article, the date was twenty second. So this is how it comes. Okay. So now date time we have uh, we have these are the data types which you have in SQL Server. We have a uh, bit, tiny int, small int, int, big int. So these are for integer values. And we have for floating numbers like 10.5. We don't need to know about this one. We rarely use it. So anyway, we'll again, we'll come back on this data types. For now, 
let's try to see topic of this discussion date time so if you see for date time in sql server so let me tell you what are the what are the columns we, what are the data types we have for date time so we have something called date we have time we have date time we have date time 2 we have small date time okay so these are the data types which we have like we saw integer right we saw some data types called integer which will store numbers and we have varchar which will store uh, which will store characters like that for storing date we have we have date column for storing time we have time data type so date will only store the date for example if you want to store birthday if you want to store your date of birth or if you want to store your joining date or if you want to store anything only date you can use this date data type and if you want to store time only time um, uh, then you can you can use this time column now if you want to use date and time both uh, like how you are seeing here 25th may 6:50 am so you can use date time and date time 2 is also used for date date and time but the accuracy of date time 2 is more than date time so if you see here, uh, if you see here, I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing here, six fifty nine seconds, five sixty seven milliseconds. So, so if you want to have the accuracy till nanoseconds uh, or or more, then you can go for date time two. Yeah, get date will will give you date and time both. So date time two, date time two will give you the accuracy till nanoseconds, nanoseconds, uh, like hundred nanoseconds. So the accuracy for date time two is hundred nanoseconds. So here, this is giving. So 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 date time will give you. So let me show that to you. Okay. See here, what is the accuracy for date time? date time the accuracy is 3.3 milliseconds 3.3 milliseconds and small date time the accuracy is one minute so for example let's try to understand this better now okay i i will copy this okay i don't want to confuse you now okay we can discuss more in the next class on this date time but still see if you can understand i am declaring a variable declare at the rate at the rate at the rate devo b and i'm giving here as date okay so i declared variable as devo b date and select at the rate devo b is equal to get date and then i'm printing at the rate devo b now if i execute this so in sql server this is how you declare a variable so if you already have any programming experience uh, we declare like this in C sharp or C language we declare like this int dob or float uh, float age or height like this we will do in programming languages like C language Java C++ we do like this but in SQL server we have to declare like this declare at the rate dob so at the rate we use for all the variables so declare at the rate dob I'm declaring this as date now when I do select select dob equal to get date so select or set will assign this get date to this dob and print will print the dob so now if i execute this i can see that i'm not seeing the time here why i'm not seeing time here because i declared this as because i have declared this dob as date so it will only give you the date here although your get date will give you including time you when you declare this as date you will see the value only as date okay you're not seeing the time here now if i put here as time if i declare this as time now when i execute this i'll only see the time see now i'm seeing 655 16 seconds 213000 something okay this is so that is use of time when you want to store only time better use time data type when you want to store only date use use date data type when you want to store date and time use date time so when i do this you can see that the accuracy so when i use date time i'm only seeing 655 am 
so when I use date time I'm only seeing 655 a.m. so when I execute this again I'm seeing 655 a.m. I'm not seeing more than this so when I use here date time 2 see what happens now I'm seeing here accuracy is even my even nanoseconds I'm seeing here so now you are getting date time date time is less accurate when compared to when compared to date time 2 depending on your requirement for example you want to you want to store nanoseconds for example for example you are working for you are working for NASA or you are working for ISRO in that case you have to you might be required to store nanoseconds or or microseconds or so when the sat satellite has reached exact point you might need to store microseconds in that case you will use date time 2 for more for more accuracy but if you just want date and time in that case you can use date time and if you want only date you can use date if you want only time you can use time data type and we have something called small date time okay so now let's try to understand what is small date time okay so if you see here for small date time the accuracy is one minute for date time the accuracy is 3.3 milliseconds okay so questions so which is the date time variable with more accuracy which is the date time date time data type with more accuracy date time no I am saying someone has date time it is not date time it is date time 2 ok date time 2 the accuracy is uh, let me clarify you the accuracy of date time 2 date time 2 accuracy is 10 nanoseconds I believe anyway I'll I'll um, you can research on this and you should tell me tomorrow ok now which is the date time data type which which with less accuracy which is the date time data type which less accuracy ok it is small date time it is small date time not date time I repeat again the accuracy of small date time is 1 minute the accuracy of date time is 3.3 .3 milliseconds the accuracy of uh, date time 2 is 100 nanoseconds ok so now let's try to understand just a second yeah I, I I know that it is uh, it is around 100 nanoseconds let's try to confirm that okay so daytime 2 the accuracy is uh, accuracy is yeah it is correct so the accuracy for the accuracy for you can see here the accuracy for daytime 2 is 100 nanoseconds okay now anyway so which is more accurate date time 2 is more accurate because it is even storing nanoseconds but date time will only store milliseconds small date time will only store minutes so depending on your requirement you have to choose the data type appropriate data type okay so I'll quickly summarize what we have discussed for the day um, so let me open this PDF so first thing we started with uh, logging into SQL server and we saw that there are two types of authentications windows authentication and sql server authentication and i have not explained more on that we'll see that later and then after logging in we created a database create database 24th may batch or whatever and inside that database we have created table employee and we saw that what is the use of identity column and we also saw uh, constraints on primary key which will which we, which is unique for a particular record uh, which is unique for among the table and we saw that primary key will not allow null values and also primary key will not allow duplicate values and then we saw not null constraint where you cannot insert null value for that for that particular column and we also saw identity identity column which will have two things one is seed value and the increment value and then we learned about uh, integer data type and varchar data type where varchar will allow um, varying data types and then we saw check constraint where you want to restrict a particular column not to allow some values 
So we saw that salary should be greater than zero, check constraint. We also saw A is greater than 35, less than 35. And also uh, we saw, uh, we got input from Sharin saying like employee ID also we can have uh, a check constraint. And uh, Kavita has explained uh, about primary key, the points. And um, and then now we saw date time, uh, date variables. So date, time, date time, small date time, date time two. These are the data types which we have for which we have in SQL Server for date time. And we saw that small date time the accuracy is less one minute, and date time the accuracy is 3.33 milliseconds, and for date time two the accuracy is 100 nanoseconds. Okay, and also we saw that if you want to get the current date and time of the system, you need to give select get date. Then at the at the end of the course, I mean end of the class, we saw that we can declare the variables using declare, declare um, how to declare in SQL Server. We saw that uh, we declare like this: declare variable name and data type. Declare variable name data type. And for assigning, we can even give select or or what you can do is you can actually give set. For example, for example, uh, you can even okay. I'll explain that in the next class. So this is about today's session. So tomorrow we'll see more about, I mean, not tomorrow, in the next class, we'll see more about data types, other data types. And we'll see about um, writing required queries. Okay. So that's all for today. Any questions you have or any suggestions, any questions? Hello? Okay, so yeah, so I'll take uh, okay. So I think I have all your mail IDs. So so what we'll do is I'll we'll stop here and I'll try to troubleshoot uh, the issue which 